good morning student good morning students okay lakshmi good morning students so last class we discuss about the um, ferranti effect and the detailed uh, expression for ferranti effect by considering the nominal pi method that is we have to prove that vr is greater than vs that is at no load condition or light load condition the receiving end voltage is greater than the sending end voltage so this effect is called ferranti effect and we may, may clearly um, so the uh, clearly know about the ferranti effect how to reduce how to reduce generally ferranti effect is mainly occurring due to charging current right charging current at the receiving end so to reduce charging current automatically we have to reduce the um, current so and the problems also so uh, already explain all these problems last class now so the problems of abcd constant design of abcd constant or generalized constant of a performance transmission line for short transmission line medium and long okay now uh, another concept that is called surge impedance so very very important so it is uh, coming two marks and complex uh, examination also very very important so every time they asking surge impedance or surge impedance loading so surge impedance or it may be you can called as characteristic impedance or you may called as a nominal impedance whatever it may be or natural impedance so generally um this characteristic impedance the surge impedance is nothing but impedance of a lossless transmission loss em undagudu that one transmission line lo unde impedance ne manu surge impedance and piston it is also called a natural impedance because this impedance has, is nothing but um, whenever the load will be whenever load will be connect to the receiving end so then the impedance of the transmission line is called as surge impedance since the line is assumed to be lossless there is no loss there is no loss is nothing but vs is equal to vr right so series resistance and the shunt conductors is negligible so that means a uh, inductance to conduct uh, conductors lag power wall and lossless ray undavu so resistance zero g zero conductance code zero manaku telusu r plus j omega l divided by g plus j omega c right so r g zero square root of j omega l by j omega c j omega j omega cancel to each other then the surge impedance is equal to root l by c so generally it is calculated for per unit so z is equal to r plus j omega l this is the transmission impedance transmission line impedance and this is the capacitive effect capacitive admittance and conductance y is equal to g plus j omega c and z is equal to r plus j omega l so now we have to consider a lossless transmission line is nothing but the resistance and conductance of a transmission line is zero that is r is equal to zero g is equal to zero substitute the two values in the above equation that is z is equal to j omega l y is equal to j omega c therefore surge impedance surge impedance is equal to or characteristic impedance equal to square root of z by y square root of z by y 
So what is Z? J omega L. What is Y? J omega C. Therefore, such impedance equal to root L by C. Such impedance equal to root L by C. It is very very important. The given L value, the given C value, determine the such impedance of a transmission line. So in general, in general, for a transmission line, for a transmission line, uh, overhead transmission line, the value of such impedance is 300 to 400. Otherwise, 300 to 500 ohms. Generally, 400 ohms. So say correct value is nothing but 400 ohms. The range is nothing but 300 to 500 ohms. Suppose going to the cable, cables, underground cables. So the for a cables, the such impedance value is 40 ohms. Suppose we are giving the range is 30 to 50 ohms, right? So now this is the this is the value V Z and I Z. V by V by I is nothing but impedance, right? V is equal to R plus J omega L. I is equal to G plus J omega L, right? R plus J omega L, G plus J omega C. Therefore, Z naught is equal to V Z by I Z is equal to so why because so this is vz by iz and this value is iz by vz so take in the left side of the equation so now vz by iz square vz by iz square that is vz by iz is equal to square root of r plus j omega l by g plus j omega c right that, that is equal to such impedance z is equal to vz by iz is equal to square root of R plus J omega L by G plus J omega C. Suppose we have to consider the transmission line is a lossless transmission line at that time. So R is equal to 0, G is equal to 0. So therefore, such impedance is equal to root L by C. Right? So root L by C. And sometimes we can, we can write also like this. The RL value is equal to Z naught. It is a ratio transformer. That is nothing but transformation ratio. The transformer is one is to one transformer ratio. RL is greater than Z naught is nothing but it will act as a step down transformer. RL less than Z naught is nothing but it will act as a step up transformer. So depending upon the requirement of the consumers, the transformer may be step down or step up or it may be transformation. Now the characteristic impedance for wavelength x is equal z naught is equal to square root of open circuit impedance, short circuit impedance. As usual, um, z by y that is nothing but root one by one by root l by c. So characteristic impedance of transmission line is z c or z n is equal to square root of root z by y. That is root l by c. So you can call more more times such impedance, not characteristic impedance or not natural impedance. It is mainly um, uh, called as such impedance. Most of the times we can call it as such impedance, and sometimes we can call it as characteristic impedance, or sometimes we can call it as natural impedance. Where when we are called uh, characteristics and natural is nothing but suppose the transmission line is a lossless transmission line at that time. Vs is equal to Vr, sending and voltage is equal to receiving and voltage. So at that time, so you can, the surge impedance may be called as natural impedance or it may be called as characteristic impedance. But, but most of the time, the, uh, the impedance, characteristic impedance is also called as surge impedance. So now, Another concept, such impedance loading. So, uh, such impedance and such impedance loading both are not equal. So, such impedance is the impedance value. The unit of such impedance is ohm. But coming to the such impedance loading, it is not a, it is not a impedance. It is a power. That is nothing but it is a loading load power on the distribution system. That is nothing but it is measured in watts kilowatts megawatts just remember surge impedance and surge impedance loading both are not equal surge impedance is measuring in ohms surge impedance loading is measured in megawatts 
so it is a very essential parameter surge impedance loading is a very essential parameter when it is come to the study of power system as it is used in prediction of maximum loading capacity so where the maximum loading is utilized in the consumer side or transmission system that may be determined or that may be predicted with the help of surge impedance however before understanding the surge impedance loading we first to know about the surge impedance z zs already we discussed about the before slide <coughs> and surge impedance is defined where the transmission line is lossless where the transmission line is lossless is nothing but it is a long lines or medium lines not a short transmission lines so right because of because of long lines and medium lines the capacitance is considered capacitance effect is considered that means <coughs> the capacitive current or charging current may be affected now take the balance of the two reactive power so that is capacitive reactive power inductive reactive power capacitive reactive power is equal to the inductive reactive power <coughs> v square by x e is equal to i square xl capacitive reactive power is that is nothing but so v square by x e that is i square xl where v is the phase voltage i is the line current x e is the capacitive reactance per phase x l is the inductive reactance per phase now by by simplifying the those two so that means uh, rearrange the so x l x c is equal to v square by i square so v square by i square is nothing but uh, equal to x l x c now v by i equal to square root of x l into x c right so v v by i is nothing but zs v by i is nothing but synchronous impedance zs now xl what is the value of xl omega l omega means 2 pi f so 2 pi f l what about omega c xc 1 by omega c xl value is omega l xc value is 1 by omega c what about omega 2 pi f therefore synchronous impedance zs is equal to square root of xl into xc that is square root of 2 pi f l into 1 by 2 pi f c that is nothing but square root of 2 pi f l divided by 2 pi f c therefore cancel cancel the 2 pi f on numerator and denominator each side so the remaining term v by i is equal to zs that is nothing but surge impedance of a transmission line is equal to the square root of so l by c square root of l by c now this is the synchronous impedance now go for the synchronous synchronous impedance loading so this quantity as a dimension of resistance is the surge impedance it can be considered as a purely resistive load which can be connected at the receiving end of the line surge impedance is may be considered only resistive load why because the inductive effect and capacitive effect both are cancel to each other inductive reactive power and capacitive reactive power this is look at the previous slide capacitive wires and inductive wires both are cancel to each other right so then that means there is no capacitive effect there is no inductive effect in the transmission line that means only resistance will be there resistance will be there is nothing but both voltage and current both are both are in phase in phase in phase to each other in phase to each other right so such that synchronous impedance is applicable to only resistive networks only right the term surge impedance is however used in connection with surges on the transmission line which may be due to the lighting or switching uh, that is lossless transmission line therefore zs characteristic impedance or surge impedance is equal to the so square root of j omega l by j omega that is l by c root l by c not l by c root l by c now go for the surge impedance loading surge impedance loading is defined as the power delivered 
power delivered by a line to a purely resistive load equal in equal to the surge impedance of the line that means surge impedance z is equal to root l by c vadda enta power naithe transmission line deliver chestundo aa power ne manu surge impedance loading antunnam a power aithe surge impedance surge impedance value daggara deliver avutundo aa power ne manu surge impedance loading antunnam surge impedance veru surge impedance loading veru right surge impedance value daggara deliver ayye power e surge impedance loading on so power is nothing but v square by r why because here there is no f there is no effect of capacitance in inductors right now so why because it is a trans why because a surge impedance is applicable to only resistive network resistive network is nothing but power is v square by r but it is a three phase surge impedance loading is equal to root 3 vl vr vr into root 3 zs that is v square by zs that is vr square by zs surge impedance loading is equal to receiving end voltage square by zs what about zs value root l by c root l by c so vr square by so not root l by c it is root c by l right root c by l otherwise surge impedance for three phase is kv square by z not z not or z c or z s whatever it may be all are in surge impedance right surge impedance loading is equal to v square by z c or z s z s means root l by c utu pettukondi chaala chaala so it is very very important for competition examination gate examination and as per jn2 examination also it is very very important so supplementary these two questions will asking for 10 marks explain surge impedance and surge impedance loading right surge impedance loading is nothing but the power delivered at the power delivered from the power delivered by the transmission line at a surge impedance value surge impedance loading depends upon the voltage why because wow, look at the formula surge impedance loading is equal to v square by zc or zs right that means surge impedance loading mainly depending upon the voltage voltage of the transmission line and also it is a square of the voltage right so that's why practically surge impedance loading always less than the maximum loading if the load is less than the surge impedance loading so the wear wear components are generated at that time the receiving end voltage is greater than the sending end voltage suppose load is less than the surge impedance loading so it may absorb the reactive power right so totally surge impedance load is the ideal load because of the current and voltage are uniformly along through the line that means both are in phase to each other that's why surge impedance loading is a ideal load because both voltage and current are in phase to each other that is nothing but resistive network so that means the power delivered by the transmission line at surge impedance value is called as surge impedance loading power delivered by the line to a purely resistive load equal to the surge impedance so so that is nothing but surge impedance zs and surge impedance loading p now go for the last concept that is charging current in a transmission line why the charging current will be occurring in a transmission line because of capacitance right there there is no charging current in the short transmission lines so capacitive effect will be applicable or will be uh, come to the picture in only medium transmission line and long transmission line only right so there is no capacitive effect in short transmission line because of charging current the receiving end voltage is greater than the sending end voltage that is nothing but ferranti effect right so look at the um, figure in a transmission line the air will be acting as a dielectric medium between the transmission line so that means when the voltage is applied across the sending end of the transmission line current starts flowing between the conductors so due to the imperfect imperfectness of the dielectric strength so this current the current flowing to the capacitor is called charging current because of this charging current the receiving end voltage is greater than the sending end voltage 
so in, in other words we can say that the current associated with the capacitor of the line transmission line is known as charging current charging current in the sense simply say that it is a capacitor current charging current is nothing but capacitor current coming to the transmission line we can also define like that so the current associated with the capacitance of a transmission line is known as the charging current now the strength of the charging current depends upon the voltage frequency and capacitance of the line so the formula for capacitance charging current is ic is equal to v by xc so v by xc is nothing but v by xc is nothing what is the formula for xc capacitor reactance that is 1 by omega c what is the omega value 2 pi f so therefore ic is equal to v by v by 1 by omega c that omega c value come to the numerator therefore so omega j omega c v v is nothing but v phase omega is nothing but 2 pi f therefore charging current is equal to 2 pi f c phase v phase right c is nothing but line to neutral value in farads and v is the phase voltage sorry line voltage therefore charging current in volt ampere is equal to we can multiply it with voltage v square by xc vars now what is the signal what is the significance of charging current it may reduce the load current due to which losses decreases and hence efficiency will be increased because of charging current epudaithe charging current ekkuvindo load current takkipothu load current takkadam valle receiving end voltage ekkuvayedi so right so whenever the charging current increases charging current increases it may reduces the load current so that may that may result losses are reduced whenever losses are reduced the efficiency of the line will be decreases and now whenever the losses will be reduced is nothing but so power factor power factor of the transmission line will be maybe improves because of charging current the load capacity will be increases load capacity is nothing but the power delivered by the transmission line it may be increases why because losses will be reduced that may improve the power capacity of the transmission line whenever it be it may improve the efficiency whenever it may improve the power factor whenever it may improve the load capacity so such that the voltage regulation of the transmission line may also quietly increases quietly increases increases in the sense it is not a 100% it may be 0 to 10% <coughs> so like that so the charging current what is charging current formula for charging current and significance this is also asking sometimes five marks so these three today class uh, three factors three uh, contents surge impedance surge impedance loading charging current all are important for two marks five marks jain to examination gate examination competition examination whatever it may be <coughs> zs synchronous impedance zs is equal to root l by c otherwise square root of xl into xc otherwise
వదిలేసారంట సరే లేం కాదు వదిలేసారు మళ్ళీ మాట్లాడుకుందాయి ఇదొద్దు So, totally, so this is the uh, second, uh, second unit to uh, PPGS, right? <coughs> First, we we'll discuss about the First, we we'll discuss about the classification of transmission lines, right? Once again, I, I recall just five minutes. So, first we we'll discuss about the classification of transmission. That is depending upon the length. So, short, medium, long, right? Less than 80 kilometers, 80 to 160 kilometers, greater than 160 kilometers. Some test books 80 to 150. Some test books 80 to 160. No problem. So, medium, long transmission lines. So, uh, so in uh, in our in our J2A syllabus, so the EPTS. So performance of transmission is nothing but it will contains first performance is nothing but efficiency and regulation calculation of efficiency and regulation for short medium long lines first so we have to calculate the efficiency and regulation of a short transmission line medium transmission line 
in medium transmission again three methods will be available end condenser method nominal pi t method nominal pi method for long transmission lines rigorous method rigorous mathematical calculation so after completion of this one you have to do some problems on the voltage regulation and efficiency okay calculation of a all these things i mean short medium long medium now end condenser nominality nominal pi right next part general derivation of generalized constants of transmission line what is the generalized constant that is nothing but a b c d constants of transmission line for short transmission line <coughs> um a b c d constants for medium transmission line nominality nominal pi for long transmission line you have to calculate a b c d constant now you have to calculate the problem now some numerical problems on design of a b c d constant design of t network design of pi network design of t network pi network ante endo anko manu a b c d values calculate chesam kada aa values ni t aa network lo substitute cheyadame ante ledha vaadu a b c d values isthadu manu uh, vs vr sending and voltage receiving and voltage sending and voltage sending and current voltage regulation efficiency konukuntu ante ee rendu problems manu already chesam next three uh, uh, four sub topics but four are very very important competition exam wise j into examination wise right ferranti effect ferranti effect is nothing but at light load condition no load condition receiving end voltage is greater than the sending end voltage that is vr is greater than vs next surge impedance surge impedance or characteristic impedance or natural impedance is applicable to a lossless transmission line only that is resistive network only it is the ratio of short circuit <coughs> um open circuit i mean v by vz by iz voltage by current so open circuit voltage by short circuit current otherwise we can say that z is equal to root l by c what is surge impedance loading in a transmission line sorry the maximum power maximum amount of power delivered by the transmission line at a surge impedance value surge impedance value daggara transmission line anedi maximum amount of power ni deliver chestundi aa power ne manu surge impedance loading antunnam right next what is charging current so capacitive current is also known as charging current because of capacitive current because of capacitive current so receiving end voltage is greater than the sending end voltage because of capacitive current load current is reduces whenever load current is reduces transmission line losses will be reduces efficiency increases power factor increases regulation is very very good right all these are advantage of charging current what is the formula for charging current ic is equal to v by omega c otherwise v <coughs> sorry v by omega not omega c v omega c v omega c otherwise v by xc charging current is equal to v by j xc xc ante 1 by omega c adi pai kelthundi so charging current anangane meer gurtu pettukovalsindi v omega c so omega ante 2 pi f right so this is about second unit right um, now i am ending the class now is there any doubt please ask me so up to this class we discuss about the first unit and second unit